Hey Taurus, TT here with a channel message. I got some downloads for you guys before we get started. Whoever you are, we haven't tapped into that energy just yet. But we're going to jump right into these downloads and get the party started, okay? Whoever you are, the messages are very clear for you. Spirit wants you to get ready. Get ready, get ready. I don't know what you're working on. I don't know what you've been doing. But you're about to flip the script. All right, you about to flip the script on somebody. Many of you, this is about your work life. This is about your career. This has something to do with something that you do in business, Capricorn energy, uh, Taurus energy. But more or less, this is about you were given a vision or you were told through a vision that you're going to be doing something. Some way, somehow, you know, your environment, your circumstances is trying to convince you otherwise. All right. But you're not going for it. I feel like you are. You understand that there's something else going on. I heard some specific synchronicities for specific people. Take it how it resonates. Um, this may or may not happen. Have happened yet. All of my readings are timeless, so only receive it when it's meant to be received. Okay. I saw somebody drop. Um, I saw somebody deliberately turn off another person's microphone during a performance. All right. So if you have a situation like that or you experience something like that, um, it was done deliberately by it feels like the establishment, the venue were paid to deliberately sabotage your performance or to make some type of humiliation out of you. OK, Um Mm-hmm. For someone else, I'm seeing that someone else tried to reverse their energy and give you theirs. So they this isn't reverse psychology. This is really energy swapping. So you're an empath, you absorb energy. They tried to they they saw that you let me let me explain it to you, slow down. They could see that you could see them. And when they became a when they made you aware that they were aware that you could see them, they drew you in. And when they drew you in, they gave you their energy and took your energy. Okay, it's, it's called energy swap. So someone was energy harvesting or energy swapping with you. So if you've been feeling off or feeling as if something was scary, it's through the emotion of fear, through the emotion of being scared, where they were able to siphon your en swap energies with you, switch places, doppelganger type of energy here. This is someone that uses um, their dark feminine energy to touch you, absorb, and swap. And they can do this energetically through portals, okay? So if you were feeling off for a second as if you was having confusion or not being sure around around your thoughts from another person's thoughts and really having to like take a moment to step away and figure out if you should really be doing something or if you should stop doing something because you, it's just making you feel off. If there was something going on as far as crossing paths with a particular portal or particular person that um, was feeling like they were having writer's block or they were feeling creative blocks and when they became aware of your energy and how great it was they were like oh shit let me go ahead and jump on that that's where you have like that flipping energy people that are um jealous Okay, rather than go and earn it themselves, they they use their tricks, their abilities, their magician abilities um, to be like a chameleon, walk like you talk like you flip it and make you feel like it was always theirs. This is also how people uh, can tend to um, see it's one thing because I feel like in this particular situation and scenario where I received the vision, it was. Someone was too proud or they were too prideful to come to you directly and learn from you and be taught by you. They rather just go up to you. Well, I'm just going to take a fucking apple off the tree. I don't care if I get permission or not. I, it's free fall for everybody. That's a confirmation for you as well. All right. Spirit said laugh my ass off on that one. All right. So let's get into your channel message. Okay. Whoever you are, you have, 
you be walking out here real willy nilly. All right. You're really giving. You're really open. You don't mind sharing. You probably get a shirt off your back. You're a real good person. You want to see everybody win. You want to see everybody's success. There is a reason why you are such a giver. It is not a curse. It is a blessing. All right. You are a walking floor four leaf clover. You are a walking um, kiss of the rainbow. You are a walking lucky charm. And if you don't believe it, it's high time that you start believing it because this is also going to help you access another dimension of yourself. See, you possess the source code. Some of you are aware of this. Others of you call it secret sauce. You call it something different, but it's the same thing. You do, 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 do. You know how to split yourself, be two places at once. You know how to dimension travel. You know how to redo something that wasn't working, go back, fix it. Now, all of a sudden, you done engineered yourself. You know how to... You may take a minute to catch on, but when you catch on, you got it for a lifetime. You may know how to teach yourself something, and you ain't never know nothing about chemical engineering. But now, all of a sudden, you learn, you mastered that shit with 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 just one form of modality. And I feel like many of you, you learn differently. You don't learn through just reading and ingesting it in one way. You know how to. You know how to be a visual learner. You know how to be an auditorial learner. You know how to be a learner or a student of the universe. This is your greatest asset. Let's get into this channel message, all right? You are the secret sauce. You are the source code. You are the sacred timeline. Highlighting the sacred timeline, all right? People aren't stealing your ideas. I'm going to reiterate that because some of you have been feeling like people are stealing your ideas. They're stalking you. They're gang stalking you. They're chasing you. You're running from something. You're running from yourself. Okay. We're going to get into this message. You are what source considers raw potential energy, raw potential creativity. You are raw potential uh invention idea new new everything new age everything okay so what this means is you have so much innovative ideas wisdom knowledge and understanding that you sprinkle a little bit of your skittles a little bit of your magic everywhere you go when you when you everywhere you've been you leave a pheromone you leave a trail of your scent, your fragrance, and it's going to attract every, you know, every hunter. It's going to attract every warlock, every witch, every coven. It's something that only a select collective has, okay? Um, you're the 1%, okay? So let's get into... Um, Letting people get a taste of your rainbow. Why is this so important for you to know? So, um, and when I say a taste of your rainbow, I'm not just speaking on a physical plane of sexual intimacy and intercourse. I'm speaking about conversation. That is a taste. I'm speaking about your presence, your essence being in a room. That is a taste. I'm talking about you just looking into the eyes of another person that is a taste everything is a taste of your your majesty your sprinkle your whatever you want to call it your pizzazz your essence your smurfery <laughs> and the reason why this is important for you to know is for all of my ground breaking um for all of the groundbreaking ideas that you have, for the visions and the sparks of inspiration that you are or have received, uh, you probably have used about two thirds of that on yourself. And majority of you have been willing to share it naturally. It's something that you just do vicariously with humanity. It's not even something that you try to do. Um, so it's like when you become, if you didn't share it, here's why it's so important. Because if you did not share your magic with the world, you would become bored of your own creation and you would start deleting people existence for every, 
for every thought of dissatisfaction, your words, your thoughts kill. It destroys. That's how powerful your raw potential, your raw creation energy is. This is why when you are bored at work or you tend to get bored with the mundane life, the 24-7 tasks that you have to do on an everyday basis, uh, reporting to the same job every day, when all that shit happens, um, it's because you got too many ideas. You got too much inner energy being wound up inside of you. Somebody, some, you know, this telltale signs of this is you may, you know, you may fidget or you may need to pop a rubber band or you may need to twirl your hair or you may need to do shit that just seems like, you know, it's a nervous twitch, but it's really a glitch because that if would have frat would have y'all understand what I'm saying would have would have with literally a minor glitch in the moment where you're like huh and you're back you literally went somewhere from for somewhere else you went you went somewhere for a moment got some information came back and now you're like oh okay so you never really actually sit there and consume too much you're actually just consuming digesting you're kind of like you're just moving and flowing through circuits you're not really it's like you're nothing right raw creator energy is everything and nothing all at the same time it's just zero okay so imagine something the equivalent of something that just is that just goes all right when does it turn off and when does it when does it ever really stop so this is why um <clears throat> this is why you need to have somewhere to put it okay or share it willingly with other people humanity uh I can't read my own chicken scratch, so hold on, hold on. Yeah, you have too many ideas, projects, and inventions, all right? And you're worrying you aren't seizing the opportunity to bring them into fruition. But you can't do all of it by yourself. You got to let it go. You can't bring every cre every creative idea that's crossed your mind into fruition. It's going to go down to the collective. It's going to branch out um this is not to flex this is not to boast your head up i'm just channeling the message for you but you know let me be the first to go ahead and tell you if you if no one has confirmed this for you yet in a reading or in any any type of way like this you come from the motherfucking goat the greatest of all time the g-o-d-d most highest highest best most bestest extra extra bestest cheese pizza all right you are the goat so you can't help but to create more goats okay do you get what i'm saying to you you can't help but to create some more motherfucking goats so leaders create more leaders that paradigm of leaders creating followers and having everyone praise and uh, worship just them and them alone and put them on a pedestal in a hierarchy. That loop, okay, that 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 didn't prove to be a, a, a fail state. That wasn't the end all be all. And it had its flaws and it had its imperfections. But for those of you that have broken your your fail safe of that illusion and those rose colored glasses. And now you have willingly chosen. You yourself chose. Right? To become the author and the creator of your realities. Which means... When a motherfucker comes into your vortex, okay, they tasting your rainbow. And as they're tasting your rainbow, you have to always be in the driver's seat. But it's not enough anymore to just take it all on by yourself and come up with all the ideas yourself. This is a confirmation for you that you have to do what goats do. Create more leaders. The greatest of, of all time is only as great as those that beseech them. I don't think y'all hear me today, but we're going to move on. We're going to get into this. 
we're going to get into the channel message. I had to share that download with you guys. It was just on a whole nother level. Okay, Taurus, you want a whole nother, a whole nother level. You're the first in your generation, your families and things like that. It ain't never been done before what you're working on. It ain't never been done before what you're about to do. All right. The, the, the activations and the preparation that it all took to bring you to this moment. It's groundbreaking, okay? I keep seeing that thing, you know, when they dig deep, 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 deep down within the earth. They dig any deeper, the only thing they're going to find is you. <laughs> they they just go, they're going to be like, what the fuck? I was trying to get away from you, Taurus. No, I am the goat. <laughs> you know, it's difficult sitting in a position. And I was, I was at... Spirit's telling me to share my story. Okay, so I was at a, uh, I was at Chuck E. Cheese for my nephew, my great nephew's birthday, and my, it's I got a lot of family. It's like ten kids. They got everyone got two, they kids, and then their kids now having kids. So this is my great nephew, right? Um. Hold on. Long story short, um, the first male, okay, it's a lot of women in our bloodline. The first male great nephew out of all the kids we had, he's the first Taurus male. There has been no Taurus male since my father died. He was the first and the last until Power was born. So his name is Power, right? And so when he was born, um, he had a, he was, he had a, I don't, he didn't have a lung condition, but he was having a hard time. Like he had asthma. He was born with asthma or something like that. And, um, so when I first saw him, or whatever, I was like, he was so tense. So I was remember when he was a baby I was like, he's just, you could tell like his body was so tight and he was so tense. Like it's, it's almost as if I felt like spiritually his body had just was like this dense, this dense dimension. You feel me? It was just a lot for him to absorb. If you understand Torian energy, they absorb from their environment. They're sensitive to their environment. So when they grow up in harsh environments, they get thick skin, you know what I'm saying? They're real tough, um, hard to digest, but the underneath all that, they're so sweet and things like that. So very misunderstood, very misunderstood energy. So I digress, you know, I had to, I had to throw that in there, but anyways, um, he was crying and I kept trying to get to him at Chuck E. Cheese, but you know, the whole time everyone was holding him, he's he's crying. He's like, he's like one now. He was born last year, and um, I just kept feeling like I needed to get to him, like I needed to get to him. Um, so he ended up with my other nephew, Ethan, and he was holding him, and he was like, all he do is just cry, 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 cry. And so I was like, I know he may cry. I don't give a damn. I just picked his little ass up. And I, and I held him and my nephew was like, oh shit, is he asleep? I promise you, I picked him up. He laid on my shoulder and it was like the type of grab, like he grabbed my shirt and like held me back tight. And I just started crying, y'all, in fucking Chuck E. Cheese. This baby is literally, like I could just feel like, you know, he was uncomfortable he didn't want to be there but he was doing it anyway and like I just felt like that was my baby and I've always felt that way about him since he was a baby but long story short I needed that experience today I felt like seeing him putting him in the car seat knowing he wasn't crying knowing he was okay it was it was what my heart needed Okay, it re-energized me, it refueled me, and it was such a blessing to be able to, you know, 
No, it, it made me feel so good to know that he was walking away at peace. Okay. No matter if I see him, I don't really go around family a lot like that. So no matter if I don't see him for a long time, just knowing that he was at peace brought me peace. And I felt like power is definitely one of my soul tribes. Okay. I don't care who his mom is, daddy is. That's my baby. I don't care what nobody say. But like I was saying, I just felt like, um, I feel like all of that is related because in a world that's so dense, Torians are needed more now than ever. And y'all are being activated. Um, y'all are being activated in so many ways to integrate so much energy and y'all already do a lot and so i feel like spirit's about to do that for so many people right um there's a strategy to feeling good there's a strategy to refueling yourself and sometimes spirit's gonna show you ways in which mysteriously it's done to remind you why you're here and what you're doing it for and many of you guys do not um you don't ask for much you don't act so much. You don't do much. Your nature. Ooh. But can you get a little love? Okay. Can you get a... I feel you, Taurus. Can you get a little love, though? When is that going to happen? <laughs> and, okay. When you going to get your... When you going to get your, your battery pack juiced up? I feel like it's coming. It's coming, boo. Whoever acts and it's coming. Shit. Come from behind the mask, though. Some of y'all, y'all need to stop playing it safe and take a risk, okay? Take a little risk. Take a walk. Trust the spirits. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Because it's, it's definitely giving, you know, souls want to come together. This is a season of coming together. Things are coming together. Um, confirmations and everything. So let's get into these messages. <clears throat> we will be, I will be sharing with you guys very after this message of who the winner is from the comment section. All right. Today's winner is, I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. What's her name? Damn it. Okay, Divinely Flavored. And if I say this wrong, please forgive me. But Divinely Flavored is the winner of today's reading. Um, every single day you have a chance to win, okay, or receive a blessing from Spirit and I from your comments in the comment section, all right? You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to change anything that you already do. But for those that are a part of, that are subscribed to the, the Love Nest playlist, I will be pulling people randomly just based off of your vibe, all right? It's not easy being positive. It's not easy sharing love, light, and all that great stuff. So just continue doing what you're doing, nothing special. All right, we just paying it forward, sharing the love. All right, mm -mm -mm. channel messages for Taurus. We got the market in reverse. We have vegans. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but is it me or does does dog does like meat smell like dog shit? <laughs> Just let me know, cause I really, I really felt like today all I smelled was dog shit, and maybe because I got dogs, all I smell is dog. <laughs> but uh, nah, 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 nah. I smell dog shit. <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know anymore. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let me see, Spirit. What are we talking about? Hmm. Let me pull out my tarot card. So, I feel like you're not... Something's not for sale. Somebody may be wanting to buy something from you. 
and it's not for sale. Or somebody may feel like they could just come and there's expectations here. And the reason why Spirit is saying that you're not for sale is because this can't be bottled up and purchased and, and just taken and sold at a high value rate. Because even you could take the person, you can remove the person, but you can't take the spirit. You feel me? You can't take the relationship that's been established with the that, that divine source. Because I feel like with this guardian angel... There's a desire to reach a certain connection. And I feel like many of you have been placed in a period of solitude because just anybody on the market won't do. When it comes to connecting with you, when it comes to an intimate relationship with you, especially sexually, um, like I said, you know how I said someone wants to like mate with you, take your energy and give you theirs. That's that same concept that I'm seeing here. Someone's hoping that they can become, they want to do what you do. They want to walk like you. They want to talk like you. Um, they feel like it's not fair that you're able to do something so naturally, right? Because the market in reverse is like, how did you learn that? How did you do that? Where can I buy it? Where can I get it? Um, I want to do that too. But this is something that's vegan. Okay. This is something that's natural to you. It comes easy to you. And I'm seeing that many of you, these ideas come to you in solitude. These ideas come to you when you're able to be at a space of peace. So when someone's bringing you confusion or making you feel all off, you're not at a, at a state of peace enough to be able to, to receive those downloads on that high vibration. You feel me? You, your guardians can't really speak to you when someone else is bringing chaos your way and confusion your way. Um... <clears throat> You're your own boss as well. You don't you you won't be able to to tolerate someone bossing you around or controlling you. I'm also picking up this energy like the way in which you love is euphoric. Okay. It's not normal. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm seeing your Taurus. Y'all got some magic. Okay. You can make a believer. Somebody wants you to make them a believer. Okay. They may be trying to tell you or um, they may want to bond with you because they can't, they can't do it themselves. They feel like maybe they can, they can start to receive the same messages or the same download if they had you in their grasp. Someone is looking at you. Like, um, like they want you for themselves. And so they're looking for something that you're lacking. Like, even if you're single, it's like someone's looking around. They want to know, like, what you're lacking. Like, is it love that you're lacking? Is it money that you're lacking? Is it, is it? A job that you're lacking is it opportunity that you're lacking? what can what can I give you yo this is crazy this is crazy damn spirit do you really want me to say that oh my god oh <laughs> not play it omg well yeah we're doing it so this is going to be an example as y'all know i am a taurus right but more importantly when i give you an example it's not necessarily just to communicate to you exactly, just tell you anything or, or business. There is someone in your life that is approaching you in this same manner. So 
as a collective, what one person goes through is an opportunity to to teach another person what to look out for, um, what you learn from that situation. So use my situation as an opportunity to learn from it, okay? Um, especially if you're, <coughs> excuse me, especially if you are still on your journey of trying to be able to identify red flags and toxic pers- behavior traits and not viewing it as an act of love, okay? Because sometimes love and sex can be misunderstood and, and there's something deeper that's going on spiritually um, that happens when you give access to yourself on a certain particular level, especially if you're highly sensitive or things like that. Um, <clears throat> so... What I'm about to say, if you are my children's father and you are watching this right now, you were previously warned to stop watching, but you still want to be here. So now we're going to use you as the example. Okay. So the other day, my children's father came over and to see his kids and so when they went to see him he wanted to talk to me for a second it got to a point where saying no wasn't enough for him to the point where he pretty much was saying tell me how much you want I'll pay for it you know he was like tell me how much you need I'll pay for it right now what's your cash at now he was dead ass. Not dead ass as in, oh, it was just funny. Like, sometimes as women, when you've dealt with certain relationships that was toxic, you can view it as it's cute, it's funny. Like, someone is wants you that much that they were willing to do X, Y, and Z. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's really a sign of desperation. It's a sign of, you know, money being that person's lowest grade of you know it's not time consistency things that require more of your time that you would want to pay with it's something that you feel like you get a lot of you get a lot of money so you want to pay for not just it's not the sex or the intimacy that he would want to pay for it's time it's access and it's access to the energy that resides within me right so when a person becomes desperate enough it's an insult to throw something that you you only work so hard to acquire as a means to maintain a lifestyle or to maintain something when you start throwing around what a person you know you need those things for this dimension you can't buy something not from this dimension with the with the currency of this dimension you get what i'm saying here so to approach someone with something as sacred as your sexual energy with the frequency of this dense dimension oh that's that's disrespectful so if you don't perceive yourself in that way it's not so much about the celibacy it's not the celibacy you're leveraging it's not the abstinence that you're leveraging it's the source that resides within you it's not something that you can bottle. It's not something that you can purchase. So it's not leverageable. The pattern that spirit is showing me is this this concept or this belief that if a person is willing to spend time on it, the person is willing to spend time and money are the lowest frequencies. Not because it doesn't have any vibration or it's not of any worth. It's still a relationship. But it has no escrow. 
okay for something that you curate off of off of your own off of raw spiritual energy it has no equivalency it's not equivalent they don't they don't go and if you and if you are giving that right this is a confirmation for you that you're worth more than gold. You're worth more than riches. You are worth more than anything. You are a source of life. And a lot of times they're not saying that to people. All right. We all in some way have been reduced to how we just use each other. We've been reduced to codependent forms of currency and relationships. So don't take something that you cultivate all year long and spend it with someone that's desperate, right? To solve a temporary matter in your life. Because when you co-create with the universe, Universe is never going to find you void. So even if you have an itch or you have a desire, anyone coming to you in that capacity of lust, yeah, they come into you because they 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 have an ailment and they would like for you to remove it for them. <laughs> that's that's pretty much what it is. And masculine or feminine, it don't matter. But when you get with someone that don't smell like dog shit. It's a different type of vibration. It's a different type of cultivation. So this is pretty much saying. Uh, Spirit is saying you're not alone. You are not alone. And it's not like you. It's not like you're here to flex. Or to. You know act like you're better. Or, or, or worse than. It's simple. These are people that want to tie you to them. So you can never walk away from that relationship or that situation. And then they get mad. And now it's unforgivable. And they feel like <laughs> they feel like these are these are these are people that feel like they got the magic stick. They could do anything and they're relying off of they they what is it? They last name, they John Hancock, what they have that they can physically manifest for you. You you're gonna need more. Okay, then something that you created off of sleep de deprivation and and not loving yourself. Because if that's how you cultivated that wealth, if that's how you cultivated that abundance, that's all you got to give back. You, th those two things don't match. So this is about the intention, especially... If a person is doing a job that they don't love, if they're doing a job that they don't love, automatically the wealth that they acquire from that job is going to be through, I hated that job, but I got that money. So they're going, everything that's attached to them is coming from a negative karmic cycle, right? If you're doing something that you love and you wake up every day and you're happy to do it and you're not doing it for the sake of attention and followers and people wanting to glorify you the universe is going to create you a yield you a harvest that heals a harvest that can creates a ripple effect of more positive energy so this is pretty much what they're showing me in the cards mm -hmm. there's no love there how can you cultivate how can you think a thought, start doing it, but you have no emotional connection to it from your heart space. You have no emotional connection to it from a space of love, which is the frequency that taps into our creator energy, our source energy. So what the wands energy is telling me is that you'll show up for it and do it over and over again, repetitiously every single day. Hate going to it. Don't like doing it. Or person, place or thing. But yet you expect to receive goodness from it. But you're doing it because you just have to do it. You don't really love the person. You don't really love the job. You don't really love any of it. So all of that is dumping. All that potential, you're just dumping it back into the collective. It's a pool, right? 
a vortex. And if someone walks around, doo, 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 they stumble across that vortex of potential. And, right, instead of it being like this, where you're like, oh, yeah, I used all the ones I wanted, and here's my excess ideas. Here's my excess amount of, a, of potential that I haven't used. You have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Otherwise, you're skipping a step. And you will burn yourself out and you're going to look older a lot faster. You're going to be unhappy a lot quicker. It's in the spirit first then it manifests, right? Emotion is the highest vibration. But also emotion is the ingredient that's of the highest commodity right now. It's the one that moves on this dimension. It is the secret sauce. How you feel about it, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about others, how you feel about the thing that you're doing. If you don't feel good about it, nothing good will grow from it. You will have a lot of yield, but it will be sour, not sweet. This is why a person that has less than you or less than the next person down the street can be doing the same thing that you're doing, but everyone wants to buy from the person that has less than you. Well, that's because what they're offering carries sweetness. This is why Abel's offering was found more worthy than Cain's. Because Cain gave in abundance, right? In quantity. And Abel gave in quality. Those are the difference that separates the sleep from the woke, right? The free from the trap, the oppressed. This is the difference, the frequency that spirit is trying to say. So this is why spirit keeps encouraging you to walk away from anything that don't make you happy. To move away from anything that makes you feel like you have to be left. Like, I wish that was me. I wish I could have that. Right? It's worth having a period of being alone and in solitude. So you can get clear on who you are and your unique signature. And then be in alignment with that vortex. Mm hmm. Yeah, I feel like this is a season where spirit is giving everyone an opportunity to put down. If you're a bag lady, the bag man, are you always toting around extra baggage, extra everything? You this is a skin like shedding of skin. Um, you stand for yourself rather than against yourself. You've been doing this too long. Now you finna go, it's like you're going backwards. Every single time you start having to defend yourself as to why you don't want to be in that relationship, you put yourself back into a negative cycle. Every time you go back and forth having to defend yourself as to why this job is no longer good for you, you haven't put it to rest, you only put it down. You haven't buried it So in, in being reborn, you just out of sight out of mind you just put it on pause for a while and, and you're doing something different so you can get it back you could do that as well but it's still gonna you're still gonna render you something negative on the end that you don't like because it's cap it's not really it's not real shadow work it's cap work it's like put a cap on it just shut it up make it happy make it feel better temporary band-aid situations and then what happens to a source can't nobody tell you about yourself can't nobody tell you tell you you know what your blind spots are what your weaknesses are because at that point you feeling good but there's still more that needs to attention there's still things that you need to get over why because you still feel the need to defend it and that's why it holds on to you as long as you still feel like you need to defend your position and your belief is either you or them do or die right if you coming up against someone that believes something differently than you what point does it serve to stand there and go back and forth with them about why your perspective is good over theirs the only reason why you defending it so hard and feel like you got to stand up for it so hard is because you don't really believe it you don't really believe it yet because it ain't manifest for you yet. So you're still in the stage of convincing yourself. So you have something to hold on to. That's not real faith. Faith is asking that you don't. I don't know when it's going to work out. It ain't my business. But I know it's coming. 
it's the level of confidence, right? When you have a level of confidence, you skip over the seven of wands. You let that be their defense. And you take an offense. And you just stay in alignment. Forward movement. Miss me with the bullshit. And I feel like many of you are... Yeah, you're being made aware that this is how someone keeps getting you back in the same cycle. Sometimes humor is all you can do for these types of situations. Sometimes when the person is saying, why you don't do this? Or why you don't check for me no more? Or why you don't call me? Or why did? Why are you always acting so different? Da, da, da. Just laugh. It's really a compliment to your growth. It's a testament to your growth. Rather it be... Well, this is the reason why I do this and we're different and we just got to accept it now. No, that person saying, ha ha, you still got to defend yourself. Ha ha, you still unsure and I still have a room to persuade you otherwise. And when they can't feel like they can persuade you the way it used to work, then what do they do? They get real desperate. And there are stages of that desperation. And it looks like one of the examples that I gave you. Oh shit. It don't work on them no more. I'm worried. Let me throw anything at them. Let me let me let me spin the block in any type of way. Let me offer them anything. Let me just start throwing out all my potions. This is how you have an Ursula moment. And now it's like smoke and mirrors. That means that they're talking to somebody. That means that that means that I really have lost all. <laughs> ain't ain't no they really getting over me. Three of cups. It's gonna cause the mind to wonder. Hmm. It's like spirit is saying instead of you ending something, you playing with your food. You know what I'm saying? Which keeps giving another person hope that they can, you know, avoid this whole situation. Because you keep, you entertain something. Clarify this three of cups. What's this entertainment? Hmm. This is family. For some of you, you may not even talk to someone directly, but like maybe family ties or, you know, other people start talking about you. This is definitely telling me that other people get brought in on the situation. So they're going to up it up and not bring it up a notch. Yeah, Seven of Swords. They're about to take it up a notch. This person did this. Who said the truth? He say, she say. Ain't none of that. Mm. Y'all, I really feel like Spirit is saying, stop arguing with fools. Okay? Stop arguing with fools. Like, what status? What expectation? Like, this is like conversation of, oh, you didn't even waste time to get back out there and start dating other people. It was only three months. Oh, it was only three years. Like, who says that there has to be a certain amount of time that you have to be separated with someone before you decide you're ready to move on with your life? Who said that you, there's a certain amount of time, a set amount of time that you're supposed to heal for, hu for humans to feel like it's reasonable? What? No, that entire thought process is, is coming from, it's coming from people that ain't got shit. It's coming from people that, that whole thought process is coming from people that are in relationships, in committed relationships, yet they live in like they single. Right, which means there's no love there, there's no happy relationship, they're in connections like single people living in the same roof. 
those are the only people talking about how long something's supposed to look. How long it's supposed to be before another person move on. And the reason why they think like that is because they still want to be with that person. Yeah, they feel like they didn't get the opportunity. So then they want to sit there and create stipulations around how someone else should explore their new opportunities. That's a lot going on here. Someone else is, is mad. They feel like you, they may watch you online, but they feel like you live a life that they they should be living. But they can't live it because... They got to babysit somebody else. Yeah, that, that's they think that person is retarded. No offense to anyone going through mental challenges. But this person is literally saying that. They think that person is slow. They think that person is challenged. And they feel like they, they have to work super hard. To upkeep this. It's, it's almost like. You ever saw the movie Caroline. And the person's on the piano. Dur, 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 dur. The other mother will be very mad. That's someone is like a person where. Where they feel like the person that they're with is a mute. They're slow. They talk to them real condescending. They have a very. Irritated. Patience for this person. But they've been pretty much trying to puppet their life or groom them or mold them for them to be the perfect spouse. So now that they've spent so many life cycles um, being with someone. Because the Nine of Pentacles is pretty much saying like not married but taken. You know what I'm saying? So they may have never physically married on paper but they're like common law married um if you feel me but like one person is the breadwinner or something like that or the the or like the main household something like that but they are so like hell bent on making this work or be successful this may be someone as well that you went from being an inspiration to them to like a sore thumb reminder of the potential they could have been had they really not tried to take somebody with them they feel like someone is dead weight in their life and they misuse spiritual intuition they misuse the spiritual realm they may have been getting readings their whole life or they, they get readings and information on how to control a person or a situation and make like this is someone superseding another person's free will and calling it divine okay nothing about it is divine it's harm it's not yeah they're not happy they're not in love they talk to other people they see other people but they really just stay together for the for the on the under the pretenses of damn ten percent under the pretenses of we can make something from it. Okay, this could be a Sagittarius, Cancer, uh, Aries, Pisces, Leo, Scorpio. There's something about dynamic between fire and water. Um, it almost feels like this is a person that has conjured up a person, but their spirit is so detached from their body. It's almost like they're with a, a empty vessel and they feel like they can turn this person into something. But because this person is so far detached from their spirit, this person isn't able to comprehend. They're not able to actively participate they're somewhere else spiritually they're in a whole like relationship with someone else the lovers <laughs> yeah they want to call that person they want to be with that person um but they having these family they have they have to solve out these family issues and things like that
and they don't want to be perceived as like a gold digger or someone that jumped from one family to the next family and that again when you when you want something your spirit will guide you the lovers hermit and, and the knight of cups and what it's supposed to be will manifest from there but you got to express, you got to speak up, and you got to stop holding back. This is the energy of, like, finally no longer holding back and stop trying to make something out of something that's already dead. Someone has gotten really, like, lost in the investment of the simulation that they were installed in. And, um... They're going through an awakening. It's been a long time coming. They had to forgive themselves first, though, of a prior decision that they made in the past when they were younger. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So it's like in the meantime, they just secretly watch from the from the sidelines, and they can't really say anything. And I feel like the reason why spirit is is saying that because a lot of you guys um all the other parts of your life feel like they are working or moving at a good speed but love is the only complication um or a relation or who is a who can who's on spiritual alignment with you who is spiritually aligned who's a part of your damn destiny pretty much okay um and you're not wanting to be naive and gullible and I feel like this is, there is someone that's a part of your destiny. There is someone a part of your sacred timeline. And as all the other branches are being pruned off, this is something that's going to remain. And you're going to know um, exactly what that is. And I feel like it's something that you're going to have to tap into so you know. You're going to need to tap into that higher power that higher source your higher self is going to give you that confirmation because the rest of the world ain't gonna have it um i'm gonna end it there and i'm gonna go over to the stay nested membership and we're gonna extend this further and look to see if there's anything in that sacred timeline of the person that you're connected to that you share that imprint with that is being aligned that is something that would give you some type of confirmation of your own intuition as far as who what the who they said the when where and why is irrelevant it's the who so we're going to get into the who <laughs> the whoville we're going to get into the who over on stay nested but before we jump over to that Let's get into divinely flavored reading, okay? What deck do I want to use for you, spirit? Huh. So they want me to use this deck for you, this oracle. Spirit, what channel message do you have for divine divinely flavored? <laughs> I'm sorry. What channel message do you have for Divinely Flavored? <clears throat> Congratulations, boo. I hope whenever you got it to this reading, if you find it, that it finds you well. Thank you for always, always sharing good vibes in that comment section and being a daily inspiration to others. It's not easy, but we appreciate you over here on our love nest. May you continue Divinely Flavored. To surf this wave into infinity <laughs> and beyond. I, I may you continue to receive love, abundance, and prosperity over your life tenfold. I say, okay. Spirit, talk to me, baby. Okay. Service. Okay, this is about your life purpose. This is about something that you feel creatively. You speak to dead people. Mm hmm This is keep it above fifty. You keep you speak to dead people. You're a medium, and you have the gift to help people transition. You you may be drawn to the elderly as well. I feel like um it's difficult for you to tap into this mediumship 
because you haven't really gotten over some type of it feels like a feminine energy like a grandmother or a mother or something like that you may have felt like um I don't know if they shamed this ability that you had or they made you feel insecure someone affected your security as a young child and you have to forgive this ancestor that's what they're telling me let me get some more cards you have to forgive this ancestor they knew not what they said or did this could have been a very religious person yeah we have inner child be open they could have you know closed you up and that's what's making it difficult for you to overcome some type of fear of the dead you know this could have been someone that just made it very scary or daunting like it was bad or not good and you're really trying to focus on your self-worth here so you could be able to hear the spirits talking to you because i feel like in some way you're doing it but you are not able to really tap in with whisper in reverse. You are utilizing it's like a gateway. But it's like you're at you're on the fence, you're at the gate, but you haven't quite walked in. And I feel like the idea of hearing a voice talk to you in a still room is like, oh my God, like I am ready for it, but I'm not ready for it. So it's a little scary. Um I feel like that's what's not connecting. And I feel like you're a little afraid of 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 what they might say or what you're what you might hear, what they might want you to convey. You know, you want to make sure that you're connecting with the highest vibration. But I really feel like you work. You have a gift of working with third order souls. So I would recommend researching third or order souls. And those are like the orders that usually pastors work with exorcists work with um they are the, the crossed over okay mediumship ta-da <laughs> welcome to the other side okay however like i said you aren't able to really hear them communicate to you so i feel like right now you're just reading like surface energy um you know you're, you're not really uh, using your mediumship yet. They want to communicate with you directly. But I do feel like there's something blocking you as far as. Uh, yeah. You may have saw a ghost when you were younger and it scared you so much to the point where you were like, oh, no. I don't want to see anything bad. I don't want to see. You have the ability to not just hear it, but you can see moving like you can see actual figures in the in the physical okay it may start off in your mind's eye but you do have that ability that gift change <clears throat> you're the only one that can open this door but the more signs and confirmations that they show you that you see outside, it is helping to open that door. It takes time and it's okay. But I do feel like they are saying that they can tell, they can sense. They're telling, letting me know that you are longing to be able to go deeper and to be able to see it. You want it, but you don't know how to open that door. And I feel like it may be connected to... Um, Something that you were stripped of from an elder. And you may have to communicate directly to that elder. Uh, feels like a woman figure that like binded you um, from that ability. As a way to protect you, I don't feel like it was ma malicious. But I do feel like if you connect with that ancestor directly, it might help you... Um, Put the missing pieces together, child. So I hope that helps. That's what I got for you. <clears throat> yeah, you, this is Pathfinder energy. You're trying to find your path. 
All right, so let's get into the uh, closing messages for all my Taurians. Spirit, what's your closing message for the Tauruses? Before we go over to the Stay Nested tier. If this is where we part, I will see y'all tomorrow after this message. <clears throat> if you're on the other side, I will see you there. Okay, okay. Ooh, we have supernatural. Yes, this is definitely supernatural abilities. You're otherworldly. Come through, spirit. Dragon. You are the ancient wise sage. You can shape shift at will. Mastery is your destiny. Rise with dignity. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Bottom of the deck. Look at that. We're talking about luck and you got ladybug. Good luck. Four leaf clover. You are a bright energy. Let worry go and be happy here and now. Feel good about being a loving and colorful you. You bless the world with color and good luck. All right, you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.